Um, but Jenna, speaking of the news, and this is actually a rather terrible topic, but the news in the UK has been awash uh, with a stabbing incident mm. uh, in Croydon in London. Look, Sadiq Khan has been pretending to do his job. Uh, I think he's been convincing very few people in the process. But mm. the royals have got on board and, and William is doing his bit to support a charity focused on reducing uh, youth crime. Yeah, Cara, it's a horrific incident where I guess it brings in this horrible lens of uh, coercive control and, and horrible gender norms and things like that that come into the mix. And uh, yeah, their hats off to, to the royals that have to, uh, sort of risen above the fray of politics on this and they've decided to just to go into the heart of the matter and talk about, you know, crime that's happening on the streets and in the outer suburbs of, of London. Whereas you see, you know, Sadiq Khan, who probably wants to seize himself moving into, you know, the Commons one day um, uh, with in any type of role and the fact that he's just issued, you know, a couple of sentences as a statement, whereas the royals seem to be rising above it. And I think that's the real interesting part. And there's a real dichotomy now of, you know, people slam the monarchy and say it's outdated, we don't need it. But I think we do, for, especially if this is one example where we do, because at least they rise above it. Whereas I feel everyone is getting so bogged down in the election cycle, they're all just worried about how they can make a, tra a tragedy play well for them, where, depending on where they're at in the election cycle. So I think that's quite a good point, that the, the monarchy, I suppose, um, is the consistency um, or, the, or that, that constant thread that goes through the British um, cultural and political landscape in between the electoral cycles. Absolutely, Caroline. I think it, it shows how successful and how popular the monarchy has been, uh, not just in the UK, but around the world and particularly here in Australia. It is that common thread through society. Uh, we look to the monarchy, particularly Queen Elizabeth when she was alive, uh, for that reassurance uh, to steady the ship. Uh, to calm the waters and, you know, reassure our society that things will be OK and offer, you know, some very strong words of wisdom. So I think Jenna's right when these uh, political types just, again, insert themselves into the story and are out for themselves, uh, there's an agenda always at play there. And Carrie, can I just add, I think and it's really interesting sure. that, um, that the fact that all of these issues, I mean, yeah, sure, it involved children, so that's something that obviously the Prince and Princess of Wales are very focused on at this point in time. But it is interesting, and when, you know, all three of us have been to the UK recently, and you do get this distinct vibe that maybe the King isn't that popular, but when uh, Kate and William do speak, a lot of people listen. So it kind of falls on them to take the responsibility of, you know, how the palace responds to these issues in their local, you know, in their backyard, which I think is really interesting and one to watch uh, moving forward. Totally. And we, we can see how much um, that even the King and Queen are, are allowing William and Kate to be mm. front and centre of things, uh, even though, obviously, they are next in life. But, Soph, the Sussexes, they seem to be the flip side of that coin, um, again, labelled climate hypocrites, having flown seven times in 14 days. They don't seem to be too introspective, but, you know, they should be able to hire advisers to point out the obvious for them. Well, this is where I think they let themselves down, Caroline. It's such an obvious thing that they're doing that is so hypocritical. How can they jet set around the world, carry on like these mega stars, and then dictate to the little people that we're in a climate emergency and we need to save the planet? They actually said they were only ever going to have two children to minimise the damage to the planet. Uh, and here they are stepping on and off planes like it's going out of fashion. And I think that just loses them any credibility that they have left, Caroline. If they're going to tell uh, the general public, it's, it's a case of, you know, they need to set an example here. Uh, but when they're saying something and doing the complete opposite, who on earth is going to listen to them? And I would argue few people will. And I think that is why they are so unpopular. Now, so just before uh, we go, and I've got I've got less than a minute, but uh, Camilla um, this weekend has been hanging out with Judy Dench at the Brahma Literary Festival. It's got heavy hitters written all over it. You've seen Camilla up close. How did it look to you? 
Caroline, this is fantastic. Camilla, who's definitely won the hearts of many people, she's turned the tide. Uh, I went to one of her events in June at Hampton Court Palace, a part of her Queen's Reading Room, where she had Ben Elton and Judy Dench on stage. It was remarkable. The, uh, Camilla was there and everyone was just so excited to have her sitting across the aisle with the public. And I think she's done a lot of good work here. And I think it's a terrific thing that she's doing. And there's been so much popularity with it. So a big tick to her. So if I've got to jump in there, I've got to get to a break. Uh, Jenna Clark, Sophie Ellsworth, thank you so much for joining us.